Hello ladies and gentlemen, boys, girls, dogs, and cats, and welcome back to Calm Down Level Up. And today we're here again in the Hearts of Iron 4 um, scenario thing we kind of set up where we gave everyone, we gave everyone like angry pills and then just let them lose each other. Also, we deleted the factions before it started, so it got kind of crazy. Um, but I was just letting the game run a little bit just to get past sort of where we were last time. And some, some more stuff has happened, we'll go over that. But the, another thing here that just happened, I just wanted to start recording maybe when someone joined the war. And someone just did join the war. Turkmenistan, and they joined on the side of Russia. So, they are the latest um, country to join the fray. Um, so, they will have support through Kazakhstan, and I guess there's like Chinese troops here, which is cool. Um, but that creates a new front, because uh, Turkmenistan and Afghanistan have a front together, and they are in opposite factions. So, the British Kondorat here has just this crazy landlocked area. It's, it's a bit weird. And Turkmenistan is bordering it right there so we will probably see Kazakhstani maybe Chinese troops come through I don't know why China is just like sitting a bunch of troops on the border why don't they just join if they joined it, it would be crazy I think oh shit look at this who's joining here is this is this uh or is this Japan there's no troops here <laughs> they could just push down and take it back I don't see why they don't but so there's a landing in eastern Siberia at least that's happening oh looks like um probably the Americans and stuff have taken these or maybe were these already American I don't know they seemed like they would be Russian but yeah that's weird um other fronts let's go over really quick before we start Yemen still going on <laughs> um I don't know what's going on with Yemen but it's uh, the allies just cannot capture it they just are having the hardest time capturing Yemen um I think they pulled a bunch of troops out actually because they were getting so attrition like look at all these all these troops that they had to pull out um, there's still some Ethiopians here, uh, even though Ethiopia is not in the faction, they should just join. I don't know. I don't know why not. Um, so that's happening there. Just a lot of a lot of fighting for nothing. Um, over here, Poland is still happening. I don't. I really can't tell who's winning because, um, you know, the Russians got through. They got all the way to Berlin, and then they got pushed back from Berlin all the way to right here. And then this has stayed somewhat stagnant. Um, I've seen these Russians, like, just keep the Allies from pushing in anymore, um, at all. Even though they did connect this just a few minutes ago, this was connected this way. Um, so this is bad for these guys. Is it Mexico? Oh shit, Mexico, yeah. Forgot about that. Forgot Mexico is, like, supporting them. It's a bit weird. Um, also, just want to point out, still nothing happening in South America. I did give everyone in South America crazy angry pills and... Looks like everyone kept their shit together, so, um, South America is possibly the only continent where there's not going to be a front. Um, also Central America, um, not, no one joined there. I gave everyone here in Central America, uh, angry pills and nothing happened. Um, the Caribbean, I mean, there's some, uh, some stuff going on here because America is in the, in the thing, so I guess we could say the, the Caribbean is in the war just barely because of Puerto Rico, but that's pretty much all we could say. Um, India doing, doing fine, um. Japan doing fine over there. Let's talk about Africa. Okay, so the Russians are further losing losing territory and losing uh, support in Algeria and Morocco. And I, th I think Morocco is going to be down pretty soon um, because the allies are continuing to push in and adding more troops. So they're really focusing this area right now. So look at all this. Like there's tons of stuff. Um, they're all pushing down into Algeria, trying to recapture Algeria and trying to take Morocco out. Um, and then they'll have to push down here into Mar... 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 Chuania? Is that how you call it? Um, Mar... Marutiania. I think... I think that's how you call it. Um, and obviously the offensive into Libya is pretty hopeless at this point. They just need to pull out and defend what they have, or defend Morocco at least. Um, yeah, and also they've pushed down and captured Chad. So Chad is under occupation, and I saw that Chad actually capitulated. So Chad's capitulated. Um... Uh, any chance for them to go in and capture all this is now gone and they won't be able to move into South Africa or South Sudan because there is a border here not here so they can't cross into South Africa or not South Africa South Sudan um, anyways and down at this front the Angola um, and was this the Democratic Republic of Congo yeah um, I'm com I'm gonna compare this front to the Korean War or the North or not the Korean War the the Vietnam War. So basically, um, what's happening here is the Allies 
are all these all these Angolan troops, these are like the South Sudan army and all the allied troops are like the Americans, okay? So they they keep landing more and more troops down here. They keep like landing massive amounts of tanks and troops and everybody. Um and they just losing because they're so attritioned and they they can't they can't figure out the land. Um and these guys up here, these um where are they? Here's here's one right here. These Congo troops they know how they know the land they're totally not attritioned at all they're just they know the land they're teaching their mexican and there's also south sudan troops here there's myanmar there's pakistan french actually are supporting them but it's mostly these and actually i ran as well uh, it's mostly these um democratic republic of congo guys they're moving through they're cutting people off they know exactly the they know the land really well this i'm comparing this to uh to to vietnam and i think Eventually, they're gonna have to pull out, and these guys are gonna are gonna win this area. Um, and once the Russians win this area, I think that might be a good thing for them because they could go and support other fronts. Um, for some reason, Canada is <laughs> is actually supporting the the, uh, the the Russians. So yeah, it's it's a bit weird. There's there's some countries that are on each side that are that really shouldn't be. They should be on the other side. Like like North Korea is uh, supporting. The, the allies which is weird it's so it's so strange um, but yeah so that's kind of where we are now actually there's one more front down here which the Russians are actually losing in the Caucasus region um, they've lost Crimea for the most part the Americans are doing this front this is this is where the Americans are doing all their work I think um, they're trying to push up here I saw Russia has like a big defensive line up here so they're pretty much expecting to lose all this land um, but they're gonna put up be putting up a fight here and they're gonna try not to lose Volograd. They lost Rostov though, so rip Rostov. And actually the Americans are back here again. If you remember the Russians actually pushed the Americans captured this whole area, the Donetsk area, um, and then the Russians came back in and re-liberated it. So now it looks like it might be captured again. So this place has uh been uh, seen a lot of fighting, it's gonna be said. But yeah. The main front I'd say is Poland, um and it's pretty even. It's pretty even going on still. So, actually, there's one more front up here, too. The uh, Russians are pushing down into Norway. So, rip Norway. I don't know, actually. Um, I feel like the Russians can't really win this, but they can, you know, take his, take land. They can they can keep pushing down, but I don't think they can really win that. But let's let's uh, put on fast. Russia called Turkmenistan into the war. All right. Let's see what happens here. So, Turkmenistan, obviously, instantly starting to drive down into uh, Afghani lands. And... There is an Afghan troop here, pretty attritioned. It's gotta be said, um, and this, these Turks are are not really attritioned. Turkmenis. We call these guys Turkmenis. Is that is that is that correct? I hope. <laughs> I don't know. You guys seem to get really angry when I like misspell things or like mis mispronounce things. Jeez. Um, but yeah, so big big offensive from the Tur from the Turkmenis here, um, and actually they are already quite attrition. But I would assume it's probably pretty hard to move around in the <laughs> in the Afghan mountains. <laughs> I, I I would assume it's pretty hard to, to get around there. But yeah, look at this Allied push into Morocco. They're almost at the capital actually, Casablanca. Hey, they've taken the capital. So uh, they moved their capital actually down into <laughs> Western Sahara. Volunteers. Okay. Russia accepted two divisions from Myanmar, two divisions. So everyone's supporting um, Turkmenistan right now and sending them troops, which is good for them. So look, there's some Myanmar, there's some Iran, there's some Mexicans. Um, if all these nations would just join the factions, I think it'd make it a lot easier <laughs> for, for this, this shit to happen. And it would make the, the war just so much more massive and it'd be cool. Okay. This, uh, this is a UK, actually. So the UK has a, a troop station here, even though it's the Afghan flag. Just the, the flags are kind of glitched out. So we might see one of the only other fronts in the game where um, actually the Russian side of things are actually winning. And it's not a very big front or anything. It's not like very massive. This, is, this I'd say is one of the only other fronts as well that they're winning. Um, even though they're definitely outgunned by the allies, they're definitely winning because they, they know the land. Like I, like I said before, they... They're not attritioned, and these guys are super attritioned. It's just, it's just a matter of time before they take these ports and they can't land anything else. Um, oh, man, look at that. Morocco's just lost. Holy shit, that happened really fast. Damn. Rip Morocco. Morocco finally died. 
Uh, so it looks like the Northern African Front is one is just definitely lost at this point. Um, Algeria is going to be back. It looks like Morocco is definitely capitulated at this point. Um, they just need to go in and recapture uh, Algeria, and they need to push in here to Marichuana and, and kill them. So rest in peace, them. They they put up a good fight, I think. Right? Did they? I think so. I think they did. Um, they put up a good fight for a while. They they I think they knew they were going to lose it. I don't know. For a while, it looked like they 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 had all this. They were pushing towards Libya. It looks like they could they could have done good. I think if Sudan possibly joined their faction, um, it would have been different. Maybe maybe they they would have had support coming up here. And they could have cut them off. I don't know because Egypt was was sending their troops everywhere. Whoops, um, everywhere else, and they weren't really defending their land. So I think Egypt could have been captured. Okay, here look at look at this. Yeah, so the Allies or I mean the Russian Russian Cor coalition federation. <laughs> Europe, European Federation um, pushing in and completely actually liberating Tajikistan right yeah so they're liberating Tajikistan getting one of their members back and they're taking out Afghanistan and it looks like they've they've totally killed that that division of British British troops that were there so yeah um, how's this going over here artillery it's good job Turkmenistan you did good so there's a big defensive line here I'm, I'm going to... Oh, shit, look. So the Russians actually pushed and uh, retaken Rostov um, and expanded their defensive line to here. That's that's cool. Um, how many divisions are actually on this thing? 23. So Russia really heavily defending this this line right here. And um, I, I bet you the Americans are going to have a really hard time actually getting through that. Because uh, if you look here, look at how, look at this Russian American advance. Like it's pretty disorganized. There's not much going on here. There's some British actually here too, um, but this is mostly American. Actually, they're fighting alongside North Koreans as well. So so strange. Um, but I'm assuming that the Russians are going to give them a really hard time getting past this line. And look, there's a little there's a little uh, Kazakhstani troop trying to break their supply lines or something. <laughs> so looking here. Um, allies are, I could say, definitely winning this as well. Um, at one point, they were right on the border with Warsaw, and now they've expanded off Warsaw, and look, they're continuing to push. They've actually taken a spot in Belarus, so looking bad for them there. Um, this m could be the doom for Russia, because they could just push up and cap if they capture Moscow, then the Russian um, faction will fall apart, uh, even though they're, they're winning areas down here. Like, Oh, shit, look at this, yeah. This is like um, Saigon. It's the last chopper out of Saigon. Jeez. Okay, so this is Saigon. And these are the North Vietnamese, and they're surrounding them, and they're slowly advancing against them. Oh, shit, yeah, and the rest has been captured here pretty much, too. There's one Angolan uh, division that's just surrounded, and he's going to rip in peace. Yep. Rest in peace, division. You, you, you tried. You failed. Where's all these British? Oh, they're right. They must be in here. Uh, let's see. There's four. There's Indians. There's Turks. There's still Angolis here. There's um, the UK. That's cool. So yeah, this is definitely like one of the main front. One of the probably biggest victories for for Russia would be here taking Angola and just obliterating all these all these guys here. If they could like not let them escape and just like kill all these divisions, oh man, that would be devastating for for the British. Uh, Concordat. Very devastating. I'm still waiting to see if France will join. I, I would like to see that. I would very much like to see France join the side of Russia. I think that would make things way more interesting because they would suddenly just like march through Luxembourg and capture Germany and they would capture, you know, Spain and stuff. Like, it'd just be really fast. Oh, shit, look. San Marino. Okay. San Marino. Nice. Uh, that... Really? Um... I don't think I gave angry pills to San Marino. Uh, I did though to Italy. That's that's a bit that's an odd one. It's gotta be said. Um, I don't think they have an army, and I don't think even if they did have an army, they could at any at all, any way support Russia in this. <laughs> okay, look at this. So Poland has been captured. Um, that's definitely very bad for them. Whoops, because I bet you they had quite a few divisions surrounded and lost uh just like these are these guys gonna be able to escape or are they gonna just get lost uh 
Uh, let's let's see. Can they escape? If they can, that's good. But if they can't, that's definitely very bad. I don't think they're trying to kill him. They're just like walking around. It's a They're all like super attrition. They have no no health left. <laughs> all right, boys. So Minsk is lost. Rest in peace, Minsk. So the Polish turned it around. The Germans turned it around. These these this whole faction turned it around. Um, for a while, it really looked like that they were going to win this front. And they were going to take Germany. But uh, Germany defended itself, and now it's turned around. Belarus is collapsing. Um, the only thing that's keeping them semi-alive is all these Mexican, Iranian, Pakistani, Chinese, myanmar Ian <laughs> supporters that keep sending them, uh, you know, troops. Um, so they keep doing that, and it's kind of keeping them alive a little bit. But uh, the, those... Those guys keep getting killed as well, so I don't know. I, I think I think it's going to be over fairly soon. I think Moscow is going to get captured. Once Moscow gets captured, it's only a matter of time. It's only a matter of time, boys. Um, also, right here, good news if you're a Russian uh, supporter. The Russians are really good. Uh, really, they're defending this pretty well. Um, they're they're starting to pull troops off though because they are seeing that they need to go support this. Oh shit! Look, yeah, Belarus just capitulated. Um, they've got, they've just got new borders. Belarus is now not with us anymore, if you're a Russian. <laughs> um, so this used to have like 27 divisions on it or something. And now there's only 18, so they pulled a lot off to go fight over here. Um, oh yeah, now battles are erupting, and looks like Russia's losing a lot of them. <laughs> rip Russia. I, hashtag rip Russia, probably. And yeah, allies are pushing in. Um... I guess maybe this episode we might see the fall of Russia, and maybe I'll, I'll keep recording until that happens, because it looks like it's going to happen here. Um, other news, this is over. The Congo have, has won the war. They've captured everything. Um, Yemen, still still fighting is happening there. Um, Algeria is liberated, and Morocco is dead now. There are some some of these guys, though. Uh, some, of, some of the Russian faction troops, you know, riding around in the water out here. I don't know what they're uh, what they're planning on doing. Cape Verde. It's in the European Federation. This is a weird country to be in the European Federation. <laughs> um, but it is a good uh, landing spot for like Congo and uh, and Russian troops. Because I'm, I'm sure that the Congo now are going to be moving out of here and they're going to be fighting in other places. I, I, I'm wondering if they will try to liberate Morocco, I guess. They could do that. Um, you know what happened here? I think what happened here is the Allies won here. They you put so much support here. They won the war, and then they brought all that massive amount of troops back here, and then that just broke the Russian lines because they had so much, uh, so much support. So, um, oh, we we could see these fronts connect here. Uh, so this is looking bad for Russia right here, actually. Because um, even though they do have this nice strong line that the Americans are not really able to break right now, um, they might get hit by, you know, from the behind. So they could get these guys are going around the Ukraine, um, and they could take out Donetsk, D Donetsk, and they could uh, come from behind here and break this line, and then have have it get hit by t by two sides. Look at this. That's exactly what they're doing right now. They're, they're pushing everybody through. Um, they're trying to make the front really large because I think they know that they have more units than Russia. So the larger they can make the uh, the front, the, the harder it is for Russia to be able to deal with it. Yep, here's the Democratic Congolese troops flooding through uh, the Mediterranean and kind of up here, well, the North North Africa. They're, they're going towards the Mediterranean. Uh, there's Moroccan troops here, actually. Um... They've, they've got to be, like, going going out this way to try to get to this front up here or something. They must be trying to come up through here and uh, trying to get to Rostov or something. They could get shot down, though. They could get sunk by by um, naval superiority, the British. Let's check where they do have that, actually. Um, so we're looking at Britain. They have naval superiority all here, so the Russians cannot get anything out this way. I think they're trying to plan a, a land invasion here. Um, they have naval superiority, where else? Uh, around Japan, so 
Japan's actually, um, probably the American ships are probably doing it here. Um, so Russia for the most part is, oh, actually the Black Sea as well. Yeah, so you can't move anything into the Black Sea without it getting sunk. Uh, it will get sunk in the Black Sea. Um, so Russia for the most part is pretty much like navally landlocked at this point. Well, they, they're, uh, what would you call that? Like the putting all the ships around so that they just can't, you know, they can't do any trade, they can't do anything. Um, I can't remember what that's called. <laughs> blockaded. That's it's blockaded. That's what I'm trying to think of. Yeah. So they're pretty much blockaded at every every point here, except for like this coast, and I don't think there's anything on this coast. Um, so they're pretty much landlocked, or not landlocked, blockaded at this point. Um, but let's check where Russia has. Uh, it even if, if they have it anywhere do they even have it anywhere it doesn't look like it so it doesn't look like Russia actually has any um, naval superiority they used to I, I know they used to but they don't anymore they, they probably lost a lot of land uh, a lot of sea battles and stuff Japan is a, again attacking here uh, they're trying to go to Siberia they've taken this whole island um, Japan's doing good for uh, for Russia or I mean, for you know, for the allies in here, they're doing they're doing bad for Russia over there. Um, what about navy or air security? Do they have it anywhere? They they don't they have it over Japan. That's cool. Um, but they are losing it over this area, eastern Ukraine. Oh, yeah, the the area that all the fighting is happening in. They don't have air they or air security. They don't have it in Sudan, which is not good for them because Sudan's on South Sudan's on their side. Um. And the area that Japan is actually attacking, they, they've, they've lost aerial security as well. So, uh, I, I don't think any nukes have been being dropped. Have you guys noticed any nukes being dropped? I don't I don't think any of have. Oh, shit, look. Yeah, so, Americans starting to break that line because the, the Russians have to go and do other things. I think that line's just... Yeah, the line's gone. So, they... Oh, well, they just made a new one. Um, and it's... Goes... For a long time it goes way out here there's 11 divisions on it now so they're really trying to defend they're getting desperate so this this line is pretty much connected at this point these guys are still here a little bit i guess um they Donetsk has captured the city but the area is is uh still i guess for the most part alive um probably not too long though the americans are really trying to connect it all right boys this took a really long time. I had to sit there and just let the game kind of kind of go for a little while. Um, but holy shit! So it's finally done. So the game the game just ended. The war ended finally. Um, let's kind of look what just happened. So um, Russia had to change their their you know capital a lot, um, and I had to kind of wait through it. So let's kind of see what happened around the world. Um, so I believe the war is over now. Everybody is now in the the British conquered at. The British conquered at is now the New World Order, I guess. Um, let's let's check how it changed. Okay, so Japan took 18 states. So obviously Japan is like now huge now over here. Japan has has a large amount of land. Um, the U.S. took one state, and I wonder what that is. Uh, I guess we could we go over here. It's probably like a colony or something. Let's let's uh let's take a look. So we're looking for for bright green. Oh, is it? Oh, it's right here. Okay, so uh, the U.S. took this. It's strange for the U.S. to take. Um, I thought that America would or Japan would have took that. Poland took one state. Um, let's go check what they took. Should be pretty obvious. Oh, it's not right here. So, uh, yeah. Uh, I wonder if it's like in in Africa somewhere. That's probably how these these things are going to turn out. Um, I guess we could go like this, and then do that same thing. Where's the Where's some bright green? Where's some bright green at? They, it must be like a colony or something. Okay, these were not are not given because uh, I know those were in the war tour uh, and they were for for Russia. So um, I'm not seeing what Poland got. Oh, oh I'm I'm an idiot. It's 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 Kaliningrad. So they took Kaliningrad. I'm I'm so stupid. I'm sorry. I'm sorry about that. Um, obviously uh, Norway got really big. They got a lot of this coast up here. Norway's huge now. Um, Turkey took two states, so they took kind of what ISIS had. And possibly a little bit of Kurdistan. I'm not I'm not too sure. Um, this this one was annexed. <laughs> Islamic State was annexed. Tajikistan was puppeted. 
Tajikistan, who are you a puppet of? You are a puppet of America. Whoa. Uh, Kenya was puppeted. Okay, Kenya. Who are you a puppet of? America. <laughs> this, this is These islands were puppeted. I'm not going to even try and say it. Um, was it's right here. Uh, America. So America gained a ton of new colonies. Uh, Mar Maritania. <laughs> American. Montenegro was puppeted by... Let me guess, America? Oh, shit. Was it puppeted by America? Let's see. Yep. America is, is huge now. <laughs> Azerbaijan was puppeted... Uh, whoa. It's big, though. So Azerbaijan, like, kind of got a little bit bigger. Um, by the Americans. Okay. Lebanon was puppeted. I, I wonder who that's by. The Americans. <laughs> the Conservative Party has been put into power in Morocco. Okay. Yemen was puppeted. I'm surprised that, like, Britain didn't take any of this stuff. Jeez. Um, Somalia puppeted. Let's just... I, cause I, I just want to keep checking these just in case there's something different. Uh, by the Americans. Conservative Party was put in power in Andorra and Chad and Democratic Republic of Congo. Kosovo and Niger. Okay. Niger got bigger as well. Uh, by America and Kosovo. Not even... Does Serbia even get Kosovo? Nope. Serbia doesn't even get Kosovo. Um... Kazakhstan became conservative. South Ossetia became conservative. Chech Chechnyan Republic was puppeted by the Americans. By the Germans. Okay. Well, look at that. The Germans actually have a puppet now. Not just all for America. Um, conservative Party was put in power in Belarus. Cabo Verde. I don't know where that one is, so I'm not going to try and find it. Oh, wait. Is that... That might just be, like, one of these guys. Is it this one? Uh, that's Camaros. Camaros. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know where, where Cable Verde is. Um, Turkmenistan puppeted by India. Okay. Um, and Russia was puppeted. Let's see who, who puppeted Russia. America. Okay, so America pretty much rules the world now at this point. <laughs> um, but yeah, thanks for watching, guys. Just a little short, short little series. This was kind of cool. Kind of cool to experiment with. Um, I guess if we, we let the game go a little bit more, we can just see if something else breaks out or something weird happens um but yeah i guess if we go to america and we go like that we can see all their colonies it's crazy or they're they're in the faction but i guess no you can't really see the colonies but can we see it like in one of these states oh no okay that's not what we're gonna do okay but yeah thank you guys for watching if you like this make sure you leave a like and a favorite and subscribe if you are new this is probably kind of a longer episode because a lot happened here i just wanted to finish it off um yeah and i'll see you guys all next time when uh I don't know. Leave some comments. Leave some suggestions. I kind of want to do a few tutorials or something. Um, and some other stuff. Oh, America's planning on invading Canada, apparently. Nice. Is Germany still planning on attacking? Oh, shit. Is it frozen? Oh, is it totally going to crash, like, right as the game ends? No? Possibly? Okay. Well, uh, I was going to check if Germany was still going to invade France, but probably not at this point. But, yeah. Thank you guys for watching, guys. Again, if you like, favorite, subscribe. And I'll see you guys all next time. Peace.